Hey guys, what's up? If you've seen a few of my most recent videos, you're probably aware that I recently converted a few of my FPV drones to the DJI digital system. Now, up until this point, I've been solely flying analog, partially because of the cheaper cost of entry. When I first started flying FPV, I wasn't sure whether I was gonna stick to it or not. And also at the time, the DJI system was still brand new and they seemed to have a few kinks that they needed to work out. Now, I know a lot of you guys watching are also currently flying analog, and you may or may not be considering trying digital FPV in the future as well. So when I converted my first drone, I decided to film the whole process. And with this video that I'm filming right now, I hope to share with you guys the steps that I took in hopes that it gives you a better understanding of what it'll take to do it yourselves. Now, before I start, I should mention that I'll be installing the Cadex Vista on my drone. Uh, the Vista is a smaller and lighter version of the DJI Air unit, which was their flagship video system. The Vista has the exact same performance, uh, it just might be a little bit worse at dissipating heat, and it also doesn't include a micro SD slot for recording your videos straight on the unit. Uh, but you can still record your videos to a micro SD slot on your DJI goggles. Uh, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. If you wanted to install the full size air unit into your drone, uh, the steps should be very similar, but they might vary slightly. I chose to install the Vista units because their smaller size just helped me fit them more easily into my existing frames. I also quickly want to say that I am not the most technically experienced uh, drone builder out there but I am gonna do my best to explain some of these basics to you. So anyways, here is my general breakdown. What you're going to need is an analog drone, a Cadex Vista kit, digital goggles, soldering tools like your iron, flux, and solder, and maybe some double-sided tape. I also had to find a diagram of my drone's specific flight controller. And if you're doing this yourself, you should probably find one as well because the flight controller is where you're gonna be soldering most of your wires to. And if you do a quick Google search, you should be able to find a wiring diagram, which will look something like this. This will help you find the correct pads to solder to if they're not already labeled well, and will sometimes even show you exactly how it recommends that you wire up various components. In this case, it even has an explanation for the DJI Air unit. In terms of difficulty, I'd probably rate this job a 2 out of 4, because although the steps are fairly simple, it does require you to know how to solder, which I know for a lot of you guys just starting out, uh, that can be pretty intimidating. I've definitely felt that way as well. So although I'm not going to teach you guys how to solder in this video, uh, maybe I'll link a video that I like in the description below. But anyways, let's get started. The first thing I had to do was make sure that my drone could produce enough power for the Vista. Now, the Vista can be used with 2S to 6S batteries. This drone uses 4S batteries, so I knew that wouldn't be a problem. Therefore, the next thing I had to do was open it up and make sure that the Vista would even fit inside. The dimensions of the Vista unit are 30 by 29 by 13 millimeters. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to fit in my Nazgul frame, which is still my daily driver, but I was excited to hear that an HD frame for the Nazgul was recently released, and I do plan on picking one of those up soon. Anyways, since the Vista unit had a lot of space, I then made sure that the camera would fit in the drone. The dimensions of the camera are 27.4 by 21.1 by 20.1 millimeters. Finally, I checked if the distance between the Vista transmitter and camera wasn't going to be too far because the length of the wire between the camera and the Vista unit is only 80 millimeters. If you check these measurements on your own drone and everything seems to work out, then you're probably good to go. The next step was to remove the old video system. My FPV video system on all of my five inch drones looks something like this, composed of an antenna, which is plugged into a video transmitter, and the camera which is wired up separately. I checked where these were soldered to on my drone and unsoldered them. So I started by disconnecting all of the wire connectors, and then I unscrewed my video antenna so I could push this pigtail connector 
back through the mount that was holding it in place. Uh, then I unscrewed all of the screws holding the video transmitter in place. And then I unscrewed the camera. Now that was all my main components out of the drone. So then I took my soldering iron and just unsoldered all of the wires that were still attached to my flight controller. All this took was a really light touch on all the solder joints, and if you pull on the wire a little bit, it should come undone. Once I unsoldered all of the wires out of my drone, I put them aside and started preparing the Vista unit for installation. To prepare the Vista unit, all I had to do was make sure that any wires that I was going to need were attached to it. The Vista does not come with any wires attached, so I had to solder them all on myself. To do that, the Vista has six pads that you can solder wires to, and the recommended color of wire for each pad are written on the Vista's instructions. You don't have to follow the diagram, but I do recommend it to avoid confusion. The first two are used to give power. These are technically the only two wires you need. Solder these on, and you should be able to get a video connection. The next two wires are for displaying various bits of information from your drone onto your goggle screen, such as how much battery you have left, your signal strength, what mode you're flying in, and various other warnings. You might commonly hear these bits of information referred to as telemetry, and having them displayed on your goggle screen while you're flying is fairly critical. On the instructions, the two telemetry pads are labeled UART RX and UART TX. A UART on a drone is like a USB slot on your computer and allows you to plug things in and enable certain functions. Just like how your laptop can have a different amount of USB ports, each flight controller has a different amount of UARTs as well. Now, while a USB port can both send and receive information between two devices, a UART is designated two separate pads. A TX, which stands for transmit, and RX, which stands for receive. The white wire that is leaving the Vista is attached to the TX pad and is transmitting information. It must be plugged into an RX pad on the flight controller so that it can receive that information. Then the drone will send information back from its own TX or transmitting pad that must be wired to the Vista's RX pad, which will receive that information back. This is why the RX and TX pads always have to cross and be paired with each other. The final two wires are for the built-in radio receiver, and if I was using the DJI controller, I would need these as well. But since I don't have the controller, and I already have a different receiver wired up in the drone, I don't need these. When it was all ready, I mounted the Vista module using sticky tape. The Vista also has mounting holes that are 20 by 20 millimeters apart, so you can mount it using screws if your frame allows for it. I just didn't have long enough screws at the time. When that was secure, I mounted the camera and antenna as well. The next step was to get enough power to the Vista by finishing up wiring the two uh, positive and negative power cables. Now, on the Vista's instructions, it says that it can handle between 7.4 to 26.4 volts of power. Now, the most common pads that I've seen on my flight controllers uh, are labeled 5 volts, but if I soldered to those, they wouldn't be strong enough. Luckily, I did learn two other ways uh, how you can get more power out of your drone. First way is to solder directly onto the same spot where the battery lead attaches to the drone. This would give me the direct voltage being delivered from my battery, which from my 4S battery will average out somewhere around the rated 14.8 volts, which is well within that range. The other way is to check if your flight controller has a separate pad that can also provide your battery's voltage. Now, on my flight controllers, the pads that could provide that power were labeled either VCC, BAT, VBAT, or B+. There may also be other pads that can provide battery voltage as well. Uh, those are just the ones that I found so far. If you find one of these pads, you can solder on the positive wire to it, which if you follow the guide, should be the red one. And then you can solder on the ground wire 
or the black one to a pad labeled ground, or GND. When my two power wires were all soldered up, it was then time to attach the telemetry wires, which again will let you view uh, information on your goggles screen. I soldered on the white wire attached to the Vista's TX or transmitting pad to an empty UART's receiving pad on the drone. And you can use any free UART. These will usually be labeled RX1, RX2, RX3, and etc. Then I soldered on the yellow wire from the Vista's RX or receiving pad to the same UART's TX or transmitting pad. And that's it, my wiring was done. Uh, the drone should be ready to be booted up by this point. However, before you plug in a battery, there are a few precautions you should probably take. You should double check your solder joints to make sure that they're clean and not bridging or touching other pads. A bad solder joint could cause a short and ruin your electronics, but I did a quick check and everything seemed okay. It would also be an incredibly smart decision to use one of these, a multimeter. However, the one that I was trying to use, this one was having some technical difficulties. So I made the irresponsible and impatient decision to just go for it and plug a battery straight into the drone. I don't recommend that you guys do that. You should definitely get a multimeter that works and use it. But luckily everything was okay and the drone booted up. But at this point, I still couldn't see anything in my goggles. So the next step was to get everything up to date. I first downloaded the DJI Assistant software, link below, and first updated my goggles and then my Vista. All it took was powering up the device I wanted to update and plugging it into my computer. And the program automatically recognized what it was and prompted the update. When it came to the Vista, this all had to be done as quickly as possible because it does get really hot when it's just sitting around. So I made sure to start the update right away and then I unplugged the battery as soon as the update was finished. The next step was the Betaflight setup and all I had to do was go into Betaflight, go into my ports tab, find the UART that I hooked up the Vista to and flip this switch while deactivating the UART that my video transmitter was using before. Then I saved the configuration. Finally, I just had to pair the Vista and the goggles together. To do that, you have to plug in a battery to both your goggles and your drone, then click the pairing button on your goggles, click the button on your Vista, and you're done. You'll hear a confirming beep, and you should be able to see your video. And that's it. That's all it takes to hook up a Vista unit. I hope that made sense, and I hope that was a decent enough explanation. Uh, but anyways, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've watched to this point, I would really appreciate it if you just hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Feel free to subscribe if you want to stay in touch. But as always, I appreciate every single one of you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.